Hey, I'm Stefan Papadakis. We're here at our engine room at Papadakis Racing. Today we're gonna to talk about dry sump oiling systems. Let's get into what all the components are and how it all works. Most engines use a pressurized oiling system to lubricate the internal components. There are two main types of oiling systems, wet sump and dry sump. Your typical street car uses a wet sump system where oil lives in the oil pan in the lower section of the engine. That's where the pump pulls it up and then pumps it through all the oil passages in the engine for lubrication. These types of wet sump systems are simple, compact, and easy to manufacture. Most dry sump pans are much more shallow and closer to the crankshaft and rod since they don't need to hold a large volume of oil like a wet sump. Actually, that's why they're called dry sump because the scavenged sections on the pump pull out the oil from the pan until they're even pulling air. Often engine builders will design their dry sump systems to create a vacuum in the crankcase, which is shown to increase horsepower. The dry sump pump uses a belt with teeth on it which has a gear on the snout of the crankshaft that actually has a keyway. You really don't want the pump belt to slip. That's why you wouldn't use like a normal serpentine belt. The dry sump pump runs about half the speed of the engine. These four lines at the bottom are called the scavenge lines. Each one of them has its own little slot that it pulls from inside the oil pan. The oil gets sucked into one of these four scavenge stages. They go into internal manifold and then out the top fitting right there. The last pump on the left is actually the pressure pump. That's the pump that pulls the oil from the external tank and then delivers it to the engine. Our oil pan is a little bit unique because it has the scavenge rail for fitment reasons and also so we can put these filters inside. These are dash 12 AN fittings that have a built in screen on them. The reason for the screen, it's to do a pre-filter before that oil gets to the oil pump. If you have like a medium sized particle that could damage the pump, then this will hopefully block it. In this case, you know, this engine has been run and I actually found a little bit of silicone on there that wouldn't really do any damage to the pump, but I got to talk to the engine builder, me, <laughs> uh, to do a little bit <laughs> better job with the silicone on the next assembly. Uh, this isn't an issue, but this is one of the things that the filters can trap. And that's one of the reasons that you would do it. Next, we've got the entire oil pan off. This is a billet oil pan where this was machined out of a giant block of aluminum. Then we can put it on the table, you can see how it assembles in the engine, where it pulls in from the pan from these slots, through the screen, up through the lines, and then through the scavenge pump, out the dash 16, and out to the main tank. So let's go deeper with the design of the system. When oil is on the spinning crankshaft, the oil gets sucked into each one of the slots in the oil pan. If we used a single pump and teed it into four separate sections, the pan would need to fill with oil over all of those sections, slots in the oil pan, in order for it to draw oil, because the pump would just pull air from the uncovered slot before pulling in oil from the other slot. It's kind of like when you have a stuffy nose and only one nostril works. When you breathe in, the air is sucked in through the clear nostril, not the blocked one, since it takes the path of least resistance. Having a pump for each inlet slot allows each section to work independently and scavenge more oil. Let's pull apart the pump and see how it works. Once we get the main studs out that hold the assembly together, we can pull off the front bearing plate. After that, we'll pull one of the outer housings off for one of the scavenge sections, followed by the rotor set. These are what actually pump the oil or scavenge the oil out of the pan. This type of pump is called a roots type, similar to a supercharger, but instead of pumping air into the intake of the engine, these are pumping oil and air out of the crankcase. The housing and the rotors are made out of aluminum and the housing is hard anodized to reduce wear. Oil from the four scavenge stages are pumped into an internal manifold and then out through a dash 16 AN fitting and back to the oil tank where it is held. Then the pressure pump pulls it from the external tank, pumps it out through the oil filter, out to an oil cooler, and then back into the engine. The pressure pump is a little different than the scavenge pumps. It uses a style of gear called a spur gear. Depending on the width of the gear, this will change the volume of oil it will pump. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider hitting the like button. Uh, if you want to see more of this, consider subscribing. Thank you very much.